Benjamin Franklin was one of the most extraordinary men of the 18th century. Philosopher, inventor, and patriot, he rose from obscurity to become one of the greatest figures in American history. In our struggle for freedom, much credit must be given to this illustrious... Mouse! For it was Amos who was really responsible for the great deeds attributed to Benjamin Franklin. And here's the proof in his own words. The biographies contained in this book were based on diaries, manuscripts, and family records handed down through some 70 generations of mice. And to the best of my knowledge, are completely authentic. Amos Mouse, historian, inventor, printer, and bookbinder. Now, to see, the earliest record of my family dates back to 1568. Oh, that was the year Christopher Mouse and his little family of 24 moved to London from Devonshire to settle in the cellar of a bakery on Fleet Street. struggle to feed and clothe the family, nothing of consequence occurred until 1573. Then, one foggy day in November, Aramis, the adventurous older son, caused considerable excitement when he sailed across the swift and treacherous Thames River in a teacup. Oh, a navigational feat which to this day has never been equaled by a mouse. Oh, Aloysius. Aloysius was a mouse painter. Well, one of the truly talented members of our family who studied under the great Hans Holbein, under the floor of the famous old master's studio, where he could observe that great craftsman's every brush stroke. Well, in time, Aloysius acquired such skill with the brush that, well, he actually surpassed his master. Well, while he never became famous, it is plain to see that the very fine detail in Holbein's canvases could only have been done by a mouse. Oh, one of the most courageous and significant of my ancestors was my great, great, great grandfather, Jason Mouse who was the first real champion for the rights of mice. And when the rights of mice were in greatest jeopardy, too. Uh, during the early 17th century, the cat population of London had reached alarming proportions. And the city was actually threatened by a mouse shortage. So, in 1620, Jason prepared a petition demanding all cats be caged. Well, this was ignored. So Jason smuggled his little family into a mail sack bound for the seaport of Southampton. And they sailed from England on the very first ship. Jason soon learned that all the passengers, men and mice, were all in the same boat. They were all fleeing from the persecution and tyranny of the old country. The name of their good ship was the Mayflower, which was bound for a new land called America. Finally, after a voyage of nine weeks, they landed at a place called Plymouth Rock, and a new life in a new land was begun. At last, they were free. Free? Oh, well. Oh, and now, you see, this is my own life story, which I call Ben and Me, a title which I'm sure will explain itself. I was born and raised in Philadelphia, in the old church on 2nd Street. Our home was in the vestry, behind the paneling. There were 26 children in the family, and with that many mouths to feed, we were naturally quite poor. In fact, as poor as church mice. And since I was the oldest, I determined to set out into the world and make my own way. If I was successful, I could help the others. But 
In any case, there'd be one less mouse to feed. It was the winter of 1745, and these were desperate times. Jobs were scarce, especially for a mouse, for we were a downtrodden race. Madam, could you use a handy mouse? Mouse? <coughs> By nightfall, I was becoming desperate. If I didn't find shelter soon, I'd be done for. My last hope was an old rundown shop near the edge of town. A sign over the door read, Benjamin Franklin, printer and bookbinder. Perhaps I could find shelter here, just for the night. Upon entering a strange place, I always took one good sniff as a precaution. Hmm, printer's ink. Fresh paper. Old books. And no cats. And just about as cold as it was outside. The place was full of strange contraptions. Tangles of wire. And a little round-faced man trying to write by candlelight. Good day, Mr. Franklin. Could you use a... <laughs> oh, dear, don't tell me. My last pair. Oh, what'll I do? Now I'll never get my paper out. I'm tired of his excuses. He'll settle up right now. Up. Oh, here they come again. Over up. Open up, Franklin. We know you're in there. Pay the rent or get out. We want our money. You've got just 24 hours. Then I'm taking your credit. We're taking everything. This is your life, Franklin. Remember, 24 hours. You can come out now, Mr. Franklin. They've gone. 24 hours. Oh, what's the use? Oh, but you can't give up. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, <laughs> Mr. Franklin. My name's Ben, plain Ben. And just what would you do, uh, uh, whatever your name is? My name's Amos, one of the church mice from over on 2nd Street. And the first thing I'd do is figure a way to heat this place. All your heat's going up the chimney. And what would you propose? Put the fire in the middle of the room. Oh, nonsense. You want to burn the place down? Make something out of iron to put it in. See, that might be an idea. <laughs> Fixing Ben's glasses was quite a problem. He'd broken his outdoor pair as well as his reading glasses. Well, there was only one thing left. Try to make one pair out of the two. <laughs> Let me see now. Do I put... Uh, Perhaps if I... Ooh. Yes. There we are. Amos! Amos! <laughs> what, what will I do with the smoke? Use a pipe. Run it over to the chimney. I must admit the stove wasn't much to look at, but at least... It works, Amos. It works. Naturally. Say, I wonder if we couldn't make these things and sell them. Call it the Franklin Stove. Why, maybe someday... Yeah, maybe someday. But right now, Ben, would you mind trying these? We have work to do. Uh, oh. Uh, hmm. Well, well, well. Will they do? Will they? Why, Amos, this is a great idea. Two-way glasses. <laughs> By George, bifocals. Say, Ben, this your paper? That's it, Amos. Poor Richard's almanac. Sunrise, 6.22, sunset, 7.43, high tide, 4.20. 
A cat in gloves catches no mice. <laughs> Poor Richard's almanac. Poor indeed. Poor Amos. Consider all the information. Information? Ben, when the sun's up, it's up. Why read about it? Oh, well, what would you suggest? First, I'd give it a new name. Something snappy, like uh, the Gazette. The Pennsylvania Gazette. Well, sounds all right. And then tell them what's going on. Give them some news, real news. Wake them up. Yeah, but where will I get news at this hour? I'll get it for you. Hold everything, Ben, till I get back. <laughs> Which nobody can deny. The Night Watch. Disgraceful. But what about the judge? A few pounds took care of him. Good. <laughs> now to fill our pockets, eh, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> Due to our inadequate fire department, the building was a total loss. Damage estimated at 490 pounds, 12 shillings, sixpence. Got that, Ben? Right, Amos. Then let's go to press. Lowercase t. Lowercase t. Uppercase s. Uppercase s. Uppercase a. Uppercase a. Lowercase t. Lowercase t. Uppercase s. Uppercase s. Space. 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 Semicolon. Another space. Uppercase r. Lowercase o. Uppercase t. Lowercase t. Space. Space. Upper e. Upper e. Lower r. This fella Franklin comes right out with it, don't he? Sure does. Well, look at this. The baker's wife. Triplets. Well, I know. Hey, did you read this? More taxes in 46. I see there was a big fire on Chestnut Street last night. Why, he's got everything in here. Tom Paper. Seen Franklin's new paper? Yeah, the Gazette. The Pennsylvania Gazette. The Pennsylvania Gazette. By evening, everyone in Philadelphia was reading the Gazette. Well, Amos, we're a success. What a day. What a day. Yes, Ben. Oh, what a day. Now I can pay my bills and you can have cheese. Cheese. Mm. Good night, Ben. Good night, Amos. Whenever Ben appeared in public, he uh, kept me under his hat. There was a small door in the front so I could step out on the brim. Thus, I was able to observe and offer advice without being seen by others. I say, isn't that young Franklin? Why, yes. <laughs> Good day, Ben. Good day, uh, Mr. Uh, uh... Governor Keith and Dr. Palmer. Governor Keith, Dr. Palmer? I read your new paper, my boy. <laughs> Congratulations! First rate! Keep up the good work, Ben. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. I shall do my best. Thank you, Your Excellency. I shall do my best. Right, young chap. Yes, indeed. Uh, very alert. Seems to know what's going on. Just think. The governor spoke to you. You see, Ben, people are beginning to sit up and take notice. Yes. Oh, we are really getting someplace. Nothing can stop us now. Uh-oh. Post, Ben. Post. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Post? <gasps> oh, my goodness. What have I done? Amos? Amos? <clears throat> Amos? 
As the years passed, Ben's reputation grew. Letters poured in from all over the colonies. Requests for money, for information on inventions, advice in business, and even for advice to the lovelorn. I spent all my spare time answering them. And meanwhile, Ben puttered around with his experiments. <laughs> oh, Amos, you should have seen yourself. <laughs> that was the funny... <laughs> Amos, where are you going? I'm leaving. Leaving? Oh, Amos, now can't you take a little joke? Joke? You call this a joke? Oh, but Amos, I didn't mean it. Now, please don't go. I'll never do it again. Well, no more tricks now. Promise? Yeah, I promise. It was shortly thereafter that Ben took up kite flying. To the framework of his largest kite, he fastened a small box, for it was his idea that I become the world's first flying reporter. I was so enthralled with the spectacle spread out below that I failed to notice a sharp pointed wire fixed to the kite just above my head. I was the victim of a plot. Amos, speak to me. Was it electricity? Was it electricity? Was it electricity? Goodbye. Goodbye and forever. Please, Amos, wait. Amos, Amos. And so I left Ben and returned to my family in the old church, in the vestry, behind the paneling. The years that followed were troubled ones. There were rumors of violence and rebellion, loud talk against the stamp taxes and other outrages. How about it, Ben? Are we going to stand for this? No! No, no taxation without representation! It was during this crisis that Ben was chosen to go to England to lay our case before the king. And now all the colonies anxiously awaited his return. What happened, what Ben? What did he say? What about the taxes? Will he lift them? Tell him, Ben. What did the king say? What did he say? Gentlemen, I'm afraid the mission was a failure. The king was unreasonable. He wouldn't listen. All right, then. We'll fight for our independence. There has to be war. Oh, he's right. He sure war? Is. But, no, gentlemen, no, there no, must no, be some no, other way. Some other way? What way? No, no, no we've no, got no, to no, fight. No, what if we lose? I will hang for treason. What'll we do, Ben? Yes, what'll we do? What'll we do? If I only knew. If I only knew. Poor Ben. I couldn't help feeling sorry for him. It was a heavy responsibility. I could help him. I knew I could. But no. I couldn't go back. After all, a mouse has a little pride. It was a night in the summer of 1776 that I was awakened by a voice calling my name. Amos! 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 
could it be at this hour? Amos! All right, all right. Ben! Amos! Well, what do you want? Well, I... that is... I've come to ask if... Oh, Amos, come back to me, would you, please? Out of the question. Oh, please, Amos. Consider your country. My country? Yes, Amos, there are big decisions to be made. I know, Ben. I know all about it. I need you, Amos. You've just got to come back. On my own terms? Yes, Amos, yes. If I draw up an agreement, will you sign it? I'll sign it, Amos. I'll sign anything. Very well. You shall have the agreement first thing in the morning. And wherefore? And where two? <laughs> so many twos in it. Will not tolerate. <laughs> Will not tolerate. Yes, whereas none of these conditions is a binding, absolutely binding. B I N D I N G. Good day, Ben. Come in, Amos, come in. Here, let me take your hat and coat. Nice weather we're having. Now, could I pour you some tea and we'll get on to my problems? If you don't mind, Ben, will you sign this first? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, um, <clears throat> mind if I read it? If you wish. Ben! Ben, are you there? It's Tom Jefferson. Ben! Come in, Red. Come in. Ben, you've got to help me. Of course, Red, but I've been racking my brains, working day and night, but it's no use. I'm stuck. But, Red, I thought it was finished. It is. It is, Ben. But I don't like the beginning. It just doesn't sound right. Uh, listen to this. Uh, the time has come. When we, the people of these colonies... Yes, yes. No, no, not big enough. How about this? Now is the time when we, the people... Well, uh, uh, No, no, not strong enough. Uh, the time is at hand when we, the people, must... Oh, you see what I mean, Ben? If I could only find the words. Psst, ben, how about our contract? No, Amos, not now. Yes, now, or I'm leaving. All right, Amos, all right. When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary... Ben! That's it! That's it! When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political band which have connected them with another, and to assume, among the powers of the Earth, a separate and equal station to which the laws of nature the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence we mutually pledge to each other our lives our fortunes and our sacred honor on July 4, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was adopted by Congress. I was very proud to have had a small part in the creation of this great document. And so, we are gathered here today to pay our respects to... Benjamin Franklin, for he was truly one of the greatest figures in American history.